Obviously, severe weather is a huge part of our backbone, our brand here at Baron, and we're not selling that short when it comes to this modeling that can go out 66 or 96 hours. We're producing products like Cape and Vorticity. So model products that typically a meteorologist utilizes to analyze the weather are also part of the, the package as well, but they could also be utilized to convey threats to users as well. So we provide a vorticity field. You can simply use that to show where the potential is for a storm to develop based on that. We show and provide CAPE, the available potential energy for thunderstorm development. So you can utilize that to show an area that could be more susceptible to thunderstorms than other areas. So we're providing that to you for analysis purposes, but there's also a use for that to convey information to viewers. We're also offering Updraft Helicity, which is a unique product and a new one for us in our modeling offerings. Uh, products like that can be something you can show, be, uh, look at behind the scenes to produce a forecast, but it can also be used on air in some ways. So the Updraft Helicity product shows you the potential tornadic storm tracks of different tornadic cells. So ways to actually use this product is I would not key in on the exact track of these helicity tracks when you're looking at the product. Focus in on the areas where you're seeing this occur. If you're seeing this occur widespread within an area, you can highlight that area to say, yes, we have a higher than average potential for tornadic tracks in this area. So again, do not use it as an exact track use it as an indicator of the frequency or the, the, the amount of potential tornadic tracks that you could have in a particular area. So this product may not be able to be used to narrow it down to the block that you live on. This is where a tornado or a tornadic storm is going to strike, but you can use it for aerial coverage and especially when it comes to those long track type storms. Exactly right. Do not focus in on the particular exact point those are at. Focus in on how many you're seeing, the long track, the potential for this to occur, that's important to convey to the user. And obviously being able to forecast severe weather at these parameters is important. 24 hours out, 48 hours out, even up to 66 hours out. Yeah, and when you're thinking about this product, it's, it's taking the availability of this turning of the winds and it's combining that with where the model thinks the actual thunderstorm will be. So you're combining two products to determine why, where that's going to be at out 66 hours in the future. So again, that's why we don't want to focus on the exact track, but the area that this potentially could occur. In addition to updraft helicity, the EHI. Yeah, so it's, it's showing where the potential is that you could have this enhanced activity. Again, I would use it in that way as well. One of the products I'm very excited about being able to offer is something for future lightning, forecast lightning. And we're offering that in two ways. One is total lightning and then also just the cloud to ground strikes. The two products, as you mentioned there, the, the total lightning includes the cloud to ground strikes and the in cloud or the, the cloud to cloud strikes. So there's that and there's just the cloud to ground. So again, this is the frequency that the model predicts will actually occur. So we're not talking about individual strikes. We're talking about the frequency, the, the amount of lightning that could occur. So good to use to show areas where you're going to have enhanced lightning activity, whether it is cloud to cloud or cloud to ground. So don't focus in again on the exact location. Focus in on, you know, these are the areas where we're going to have enhanced lightning. And there is a direct one-to-one -one match with this product between the lightning activity and the radar, the forecast radar. So you will see a direct correlation between that forecast reflectivity and the forecast lightning activity. So even though the data here is showing you flashes per minute, you could use this as more of a likelihood product Correct. that the likelihood of lightning is going to hit here at this particular time. Yeah, the likelihood, the concentration that you're going to have is the way to look at this product, yes. Then being able to match up that lightning data with the future radar data would be able to lead towards more understanding of what may be a heavy rain producer versus what's going to be a true lightning producer. Yeah, absolutely. So you could have a weather event where you're predicting thunderstorms to occur. You could show those thunderstorms. But it may be a day where you're not going to have a lot of lightning activity. You're going to have weak thunderstorms, so you could show that. Or you could have a day where you're going to have a lot of thunderstorms develop and the lightning intensity will be quite high. So you can convey the different threats with the thunderstorm activity 
based on the lightning data that you have. And much like the lightning product can be used as a likelihood product, the probability that this lightning is going to hit, uh, we could also use that with the hail product as well. Yeah, so the hail forecast product shows the probability or the concentration of hail greater than pea size. So any hail that the model feels is greater than pea size will actually be reflected. And you'll see the magnitude or the concentration of that predicted hail into the future. So a, another product that, again, I wouldn't get focused on the exact track of that hail swath that you're forecasting, but the number of hail tracks or the amount of hail, the concentration of hail from that particular event is important to convey the threat. And at any one time on the hail product, we're showing six hours of data of accumulation of hail. Yeah, it's a six hour swath is what it is. So we integrate that entire hail swath over six hours to show you so you can lapse it so it looks visually appealing to the viewer. Our legacy has been built on providing severe weather parameters for what's happening right now or what's happened in the past and identifying the threats. Now we're talking about identifying those same threats with a model that takes us out into the future. In different weather situations, you can show the forecast. You could go back the next day and actually show the actual and how it compared to the forecast. So our weather model showed potential for hail tracks during the afternoon hours and show that. You could actually go back to our derived hail from radar reflectivity and show where actually hail actually occurred. So you can compare yourself or you can provide that information to the viewer to show them how the model did, how you did as a forecaster during that weather event. So in the case of someone having to communicate the threat of what's going to happen with severe weather, this gives them a whole new set of tools that they can use to look into tomorrow or the next day to predict what areas might be impacted by these kinds of storms. Yeah, absolutely. In the past, you've provided information to say it's going to rain over the next 12 hours in this location. So now you can say, yes, it's going to rain the next 12 hours in this location, but you're also going to have the threat for hail because we're getting hail forecast out for the next 12 hours. We're getting the potential for tornadic storms over the next 12 hours. So being able to provide more information to the user on exactly the type of precipitation and the threat of critical weather that you're going to achieve.